Today you're going to learn how to make the laziest loaf of bread using just a simple technique. If you have just about five minutes worth of time, you're going to have a loaf of bread by tomorrow. A friend wanted me to show her how to make a recipe that was super simple with 100% whole wheat flour. Now you can use white flour if you want or a combination of the two, but this is 100% whole wheat and it will show you how easy this recipe is to do. First, you pour your yeast in your water, you give it a quick stir, you set that aside, then you put your salt with your flour, and then you grab your yeast mixture and you pour it into the bowl. My friend Gidget, if you're watching, this is the easiest recipe that you'll ever make for bread. Trust me on this. All we're gonna have to do is stir this together until a shaggy dough forms. You can use the back of a spoon like I'm doing, you can use your hands, you can even use a stand mixer. But all you have to do is just stir it this amount of time until you no longer see any bits of flour and it's all absorbed. It's a really simple process. You'll struggle a lot less than I do because I have that shoulder injury, remember that. The gluten develops over time so you don't have to do any kneading. All you have to do is a little bit of stirring. Again, you can throw this into a stand mixer. You can even use a blender, a food processor. Not a big deal, use your hands. Just get it until it's a nice, sticky, shaggy dough and it looks a lot like this. If you see any dried bits of flour, you can just roll the dough around on the edges to pick them up. So there is no kneading involved here. All you have to do is cover it, let it rise overnight, about six to 12 hours or until it's double in size. Depending on the temperature of the room, if it's a really hot room, it'll be ready in about six to eight hours. If it's a chilled room, it'll take around 12 hours. And just be patient. You don't have to do any more work. I mean, Gidget, again, this is the easiest bread recipe you'll ever make. What is great about this recipe is you can use any type of flour that has gluten in it and you really learn how yeast and flour works together. I'm telling you, try it out at least one time. Now, if you wanna make it really easy on yourself, make sure you have a nine by five pan that is a nonstick pan. If you don't, you're gonna to need to grease and flour it well. Not a big deal, but I would recommend nonstick for the first time making bread. It just makes life easier. If desired, you can take about a tablespoon worth of flour and you can sprinkle some of it onto your work surface, or you can give it a try to do the professional way where you just kind of flick it across the counter. Either way is fine. This just helps you work with the dough a little bit better and then get your hands a little bit floured and it just makes it a lot easier when you turn this dough out. Okay, so it's the next day and let me show you how beautiful this dough looks. It is nice and stretchy. Time has done all the work for us. We just need to get it out of our container and move on to the next step. The next step is basically punching the dough down and making it into a rough rectangle. If it's sticking to your hands, feel free to use some of that flour, sprinkle it on your hands, and it'll just make it a lot easier to work with. Every once in a while, you can lift up that dough, sprinkle some more flour underneath it just to make it more manageable for you when you first start out. I'm telling you, this is such a lovely dough to work with. It's all about patience and time, but not a lot of effort. So when you make this rectangle, try to make it slightly smaller than the width of the pan because when you start to roll it up, it just naturally elongates and makes it a little bit harder to get it into the pan at the end. And then just press it away from you as you're rolling up. And if it sticks to you too much, you can always put some more flour on or you can just gently roll it up a little bit more and you won't have that problem. But again, you can always just flour your hands just to make it easier to work with and pick up the dough at the end. Now that we have this nice shape, we're just gonna put it into the pan as best as we can in the middle. If it's a little bit skewed on one side, don't worry about it. This is a very easy forgiving dough to work with. Now I'm gonna get a piece of saran wrap and I'm gonna sprinkle some of the remaining flour on top of it and then just shake it out and let's see if I can get this saran wrap not to hate me today. Hey, look, I didn't do too bad. Cover it, and that will just keep it from sticking at the top as it rises. You want it to rise at least till it gets to the top of the pan. This is where patience pays off. The more time you let it rise, the higher the bread will be when it rises. It will not rise much at all in the oven. This will probably stay just about the same size, maybe a little bit taller. Well, look at that. It honestly stayed the same size and it should come out of the pan really easy, especially if you used a nonstick pan like I did. You want to bake this for 40 to 45 minutes or until the center comes out about 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. You want to turn it out after about five minutes of cooling. 
and you can see that Maggie is impatient. She's already punching me, wanting me to hurry up and slice this bread for her. Jackson's making an appearance, and I'm sure Raymond will be here any moment as well. This is a very beautiful bread to work with when you very first start out. It breaks all the rules, and it's just simple to do. Let me tell you, if you're busy, if you don't have a lot of time or effort or skill, this is one to try out. It should bounce back really nicely when you press on it. And let's just see what our taste testers think about it. I'm pretty sure it's a hit in our household. I'm curious what you think about this recipe. For all my friends that are struggling how to make bread, I do encourage you to try this loaf. I'm telling you, it will work well for you. It will be the best thing you've ever tried. You may never go back to kneading again. Did you like this recipe? If so, here are the ingredients we used, and it's also listed below. I hope you enjoyed learning to break all the bread rules with me, and as always, happy baking.